Good evening. All are welcome here as we gather for a time of prayer and reflection. Today marks the fifth anniversary of the evening nine people were shot and killed during a Bible study at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Charleston, South Carolina. Today, a prayer service was held for commemoration of the Emmanuel Nine. It included leaders from around the ELCA and ecumenical partners. Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton preached the sermon as we joined in a time of repentance, mourning, and prayer, remembering these nine martyrs and renouncing the sins of racism and white supremacy. I participated in the worship service as it was shared live on Facebook today, and I want to commend it to you. So tomorrow, rather than posting a Thursday morning prayer, I invite you to instead share in this prayer service that was held today. I'm so very grateful for all of you who responded to our survey about online worship. I'm going to be taking some time away from the morning and evening prayers next week in order to create a plan for moving forward. And your input will be very helpful as I discern along with leaders here at Glenwood and Canoe Ridge. So thank you so much. I will miss you next week, but we'll still have our uh, Sunday morning online worship service. And then uh, hopefully by the end of the week, I'll have a plan for moving forward. God is our light and our salvation, our refuge and our stronghold. From the rising of the sun to its setting, we praise your name, O God. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. I'd like to share with you again tonight the reading that I shared with you Monday evening from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Tonight we witness to the countless ways we've touched the word of life this week, the countless ways we've seen and smelled and heard and tasted life in God. We share these things to bear witness to God's work in the world. We share these things so that our joy may be complete. Blessings Without Number, Part 7 Inspired by Carrie Newcomer's poem, Three Gratitudes Every night before I go to sleep, I say out loud three things that I'm grateful for. All the significant, insignificant, extraordinary, ordinary stuff of my life it's a small practice and humble, and yet I find I sleep better holding what lightens and softens my life ever so briefly at the end of the day. An incredible gathering of women who are committed to accompanying one another in these days. 
wise mentors, my mom's selfless giving to make her homemade lasagna for my fiance's birthday, having you as a pastor, your singing, you. Early morning sunrise, blue Iowa skies, beautiful weather, sitting around a table with coffee and dessert for lunch, the community of caring people where we live, sunshine, smiles, colors, every new day that God gives us. Quiet country roads and cool late evening walks, good night's sleep. some time hiking with my sisters and family, spending the day with my daughter and granddaughter, video calls with my nephews as they visit family in Michigan, good memories of lots and lots of hugs, enjoyable socially distanced visits on the bike trail, the ability to drive to town and visit my grandson and see him work on his race car. Rainbow blessings in Glenwood. Feeling the cool breeze on a warm summer day. The call of the morning dove. Being able to be present as Aiden played in his first high school baseball game. Brushing the hair off my boys' foreheads to trace the sign of the cross in blessing each night the Lord guiding the surgeons, keeping Evan wrapped in his arms and giving us strength and patience, the miracles the Mayo doctors can do, successful surgeries for family member and friend, our family taking care of Ezra and our farm while we were away, a new day and hopefully the road home. listening and watching for trains with my grandsons on our front porch and guessing how many engines there'll be. Summer with my kid. A day at the zoo admiring God's creatures. The phone call from my grandson, Logan. My sisters and our annual sister trip this week a trip with my daughters in July. So blessed they want to spend time with me. Beautiful storm clouds that bring the promise of healing rain. Bird song in the morning, ceiling fan in the afternoon, curbside pickup. With Father's Day coming, I am thankful for a faith-filled father as I grew up and a faith-filled husband, sharing his faith and prayer life with me and our kids and grandkids. Fishing, campfires, marshmallows. Experiencing in such a powerful way that I am not alone in the struggle. God's call, the right words at the right time, the word of God spoken through the prophet Isaiah, I have called you by name, you are mine. And after three things, more often than not, I get on a roll and I just keep on going. I keep naming and listing until I lie grinning, blankets pulled up to my chin, awash with wonder at the sweetness of it all.
Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.